stat. So now we do the boot script. So we need to go back into the sources. So we make install boot scripts and there's some for a network interface as well. So there's some information on how those boot scripts work. So next we configure the set clock. So it says change value of UTC to zero if the hardware clock is not set to UTC time. Well, the machine I've got does actually run a DOS on there as well, so I'm going to have to modify that to change that to zero. Obviously, if it's a sole machine or it's machine shared of other Linux or Unix, then you will be able to leave that as one. There's some information about the Linux console, but that's all they sort of touch on there. And device handling. And again, this is probably, probably don't need to, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with this. It's probably if you have issues with CD-ROMs or you've got more than one CD-ROM, as you see it says duplicate devices. So I'm not going to do anything there. So just a few startup configuration files to configure then there's the locale we need to set up so basically you run this command locale it shows these are all the locales we installed when we built G, uh, glibc if you remember we entered a few and I additionally added this one because this is the one I, I want to be using the other ones were added for tests so although we didn't run a lot of the tests there could have been some of these that were used by the tests we did run um, and it says you can find out what the character map is so if I run this it should return this one here because this is the character map that's available for ENGB so you can just run this in put the locale name in here so it's EN underscore GB and you see it's returned that ISO 8859 uh, let me just come out of this boot scripts because the directory is obviously long tidy that up and you can do a similar thing for there's different options you can do that command with just to find out other information so for example the next one's territory so it tells you United Kingdom language, British English, uh, char map we've already seen, international currency symbol, Great Britain pound, and the international prefix, that's the telephone prefix, is plus four four, so that's all fine. So reason why we've done that is so that we can fill in this profile configuration file so let's just edit that so you can see what it needs is the language the like sub language type and the char map so basically it's that that's the bit we need to put in here Oh, right, okay. Did I accidentally highlight something else when I copied this? So, okay, why is that not working? Unless that's uh, via doing that. Oh, okay. um, what I shall do this time. is I shall copy this and paste it. No, it's not paste, is it? Edit paste. 
Right. So that's what the output was from basically it's the locale name ENGB with a dot and then the char map, the result of the char map command we run here. Actually, am I? Yeah, sorry, that should be that, not that one. So I'm mis mis misguiding you here. It's the output of the char map, and the output of the char map is this ISO 8859 1, not what I've just said. A copy of that is not that. So it's ENGB dot ISO in capitals dash. 8859-1 so I need to correct that I was just thinking it looked a bit wrong so it should be ISO-8859-1 ok so now I can go and create the input RC command uh, sorry configuration file and then the etc fs tab now we need to modify this uh, so I haven't got any swaps so I'm going to remark that one out and I need to put in the target partition now I can't remember if it's going to be I think it's STB6 is what it's going to be. I'm going to have to check that. And the file type we created, the partition was X2, EX2, or I will create one EX2 on the target machine. Um, so when I come to get onto the actual real 486 machine, I'll check that this is the right partition. Um, and I may need to change that, I can't remember if it's 5 or 6 now, so that may need to be changed otherwise it won't boot so network configuration so we need to create a host name for this new build, so I'm just going to call it CLFS486 put a dash in there, make it a bit more readable so that's our host name, so we need to remember that because we need to copy it elsewhere. CLFS-486. And we need the hosts file, so if you're not using a network card, you do that. Well, I will be. I, I can't remember. I don't think I even tested network. It wasn't important. Uh, All oh, right. Okay. Sorry, my mistake. It's just saying that even if you haven't got a network card, you'd still need a fully qualified domain name. So the one for a network card is this configuration file here. If you're not configuring from a network card, then you use this configuration down here. So I'll paste that in, and now we shall modify it to fill in the spaces. So I don't use IP6, IPv6. I'm going to get rid of that one. And we need to change this to the IP address. So I'll use dot uh, two hundred, I think. And then we need a host name. So it's CLFS dash four eight six, the one we just created. Example.org. So that's your domain name, whatever that will be. And then CLFS dash I four eight six. And any more aliases after that. I'm not going to give it any more aliases, so I'll just get rid of that. Uh, sorry, it was 486, wasn't it? Let me just check that now. I've said that. CLFS-486. CLFS-486, that's good. Uh, yeah. So the ETC resolve... So domain name, 
be something like what we've just used example.org without capitals and then name server whatever name servers you you wish to use um, if you're stuck for one 8.8.8 .8 is the public Google one um, and I've got my own one at that address so I'll be using that obviously yours will be different so um, I use static networking so that's what I'll be configuring here if you use DHCP then you'll need to install in the next section um, DHCP software so I'm going to copy and paste this in for static install and I'm now going to modify that file so my IP address offset is 0 0.200 my gateway is 0 0.1, so the broadcast will be 0 0.255. So that's the static configuration done for me. That, that should work. I'll say if you want to use the HCP CD, then you'll have to go through this installation, but I, I won't be doing that. <coughs> 